Capcom has blessed us this day with a brand new trailer for Monster Hunter Wilds. So you know what that means. Move aside, Elden Ring video, because I am about to give the most schizophrenic, autistic, and ADH-filled trailer breakdown I possibly can. You ready? Oh, and uh, yeah, my reaction was this. <laughs> yeah, he switched to the gun. He switched to the gun. Oh, yeah. Opening with a shot of a sand skiff, you think that the scariest thing possible in a desert would be a Moran, but no, it's ah! The two ladies ahead of us are Alma, our personal handler, who will apparently accompany us on quests. To our right is our smithy, Gemma. Ooh. Given that Gemma will be our smithy, it's not too far-fetched of an idea to suggest that she could potentially be Little Miss Forged, because there's a lot of similarities between the two characters. And finally, Natter. A kid entrusted to us by the guild, and dubbed as a, quote, mysterious boy. We're obviously taking him to find someone or something in the Forbidden Lands, which is the name of the area we're going to. The following shots feature multiple new monsters, a pack of Doshagamas, Doshagumas, a pack of Doshugamas, a pack of Doshaguma. God, why they name these? Why do they have to give these guys like the weirdest name in the world? Am I playing? <laughs> am I playing Frontier or something? Jesus. With one actively dragging its kill. In this shot, we also get a good view of the Dunes area, and my guess is that the playable space probably ends about here. But there's no way to truly tell, considering there doesn't appear to be any border like there currently is in desert maps like the Wild Spire Waste and Sandy Plains. Then a shot of an oasis featuring the appearance of the Chattacabra and a small new raptor monster. We'll get onto those later, but I feel like it's worth noting the small cactus-like plants around the water. They could just be environmental props, or they could be something we can interact with, perhaps a collectible or even for the slinger. Next we see what I can only assume is an early game story mission, as we patrol the plains accompanied by our handler, Alma. We also get to learn that the panagon-like gown goats are actually called Seratanov. Seratanov. Karathnov. In the background, we do get a glimpse of what appears to be a far greener and denser area compared to what we've seen thus far. We also get a good shot of, this, of a small wyvern that I believe we saw in the background of the first trailer. Now, it's still hard to tell its size, but I would guess that it's probably smaller than the wing drakes we see in World. So, the question is, could we still hitch a ride on them? I'm not too sure. In the following scene- Whoa! What the fuck? Catch him, Derry! Derry, catch him! Mom, will you get out? Derry, will you catch him? Oh! Everyone is calling this guy the baby Pookie Pookie. Whether or not it's true, we can only wait and see, but the coloration, wings, and face all point towards a stoner, uh, I mean, a uh, pookie pookie. As well as this, before the weather changes, you'll notice some bulbous, uh, dangling growths on the trees. I want to guess that these would be beehives, which would be a departure from the usual honey spots that we see in previous games, but it's all I can think of. On the opposite tree, there's also some large vines. They could just be a variation of the tree, or better yet, vine traps! Next up, we see... Was that the bite of 87? Right before this heinous act that surely won't go down in history, this reptile is ugly as all hell. Like, why your nose look like that? It seems that this crocodile-like creature uh, will wait in waterways to hunt. So I'm interested to see if this guy will act as a natural trap for larger monsters during fights, or simply run like other ones do. When the environment changes, we see the small raptors again. This time accompanied by even more little babies, forming a small pack of four adults. We get a good look at their faces, and yeah, these guys give major Iodrome vibes. Now, the next section seems to involve some more story slash introduction scenes. Ones you would normally get when you first encounter a monster. In this scene, the Sigma of the group says, Fuck off, these are my sticks. Shit, he wants sticks. Hunter, throw me a greatsword. <laughs> Finally, we get to see the new and improved Slinger featuring a ranged hook to grab ammo from a distance and, perhaps, shooting further. Give your enemies the brain damage for even thinking about eating you. A sandstorm rolls in, and we cut back to the intro cinematics. 
It's hard to tell if these events happen together or occur separately from one another. But during the storm, the Doshaguma pack falls victim to a sand pit. Now, this doesn't seem like any naturally occurring one as at the center appears to be some unknown monster turning around and causing it. A few scenes seem to be cut out as we end with a confrontation between the hunter and the alpha. Now, the monster which gets hurled at you is not another Doshaguma. Nor a Karathnoth or a Chatacabra. I've checked. Instead, it appears to be the creature that was at the center of the sand pits. Its back is covered in rugged scales and his underside has a slight orange hue to it. The monster's head is turned away and out of frame, but a bright blue circle appears for exactly one frame. Now, I'm not saying it's an eye, given the sandstorm and the uh, blue lightning, but it wouldn't be out of the question to assume it is a part of this creature. This scene follows seamlessly into gameplay, where at the start, the handler says, Now commence the hunt by order of the guild. Given that Alma will accompany you on quests to some degree, this could happen with any story mission, or potentially if you happen to find monsters out on an expedition. Following this, we get a proper look at the Chatacabra, an amphibian monster which uses its saliva to stick surrounding rocks to its arms to make them stronger, and I believe we get to see this in action. Notably, its design has some stronger snake aspects. Looking at the shoulders, it seems like a snake's hood, as well as the face shape. Capcom out here already replacing my Tetranodon. In this supposed intro cinematic, the handler seems to have been knocked off of her sea kit. I can only assume that we as the hunter would swoop in afterwards and confront the Chatacabra. Notably, it seems the start of the Chatacabra fight takes place in the more confined, twisting rocks portion of the plains, which is quite the contrast to when we first saw it out by an oasis. When the hunter gets downed by a heavy attack, they whistled for their sea kit. It came swooping in, tossing it up by its snout and onto its back for a quick getaway and heal. I feel it's important to note that the Seeker isn't present during combat, unlike how the Palamute was back in Rise, and instead seems to only show up when requested, which I'm glad about because it keeps it as the Hunter and only the Hunter during fights, more akin to that of World rather than Rise. But I also didn't notice the Palico in any of the situations, but I feel that's more of a choice on the developer's part. Now, I need you all to hold onto your seats because shit's about to go down. Starting off peacefully with the weapon swapping. Oh yeah, it's exactly what I thought it would be. And then the hunter does a slash attack off the sea kit. This ain't no, this ain't no Palamute dagger attack. Oh, the little, little shing shing. This is a full jump off attack with the greatsword. If we take into account that the Seeker isn't present throughout the whole fight, that would mean that this type of attacking isn't entirely incentivized, but is more of an opening option. And I would also guess that this attack also does mounting damage. Focus mode makes its appearance in wilds. Steady your aim and exploit a monster's weakness with all new ways to wield your weapons. So how could this work? I have a feeling that this focus mode will act and be activated in a similar way to how switch scrolls work. Whether this will be customizable in terms of how a weapon attacks and works is completely unknown, however. In this new mode, the hunter immediately throws out some form of charged rising slash which ends up as a parry slash counter. Then, following up by charging at it, holy hell, it's peak. The greatsword also gets dragged through the monster a short distance, likely dealing small amounts of damage, but repeatedly. The Doshigama's hind leg has also been broken, and it's all fleshy. As well as this, the monster was briefly on fire, but by what is anyone's guess? Now, I'm no gun user, but I'm pretty sure that this isn't Wyvern Fire. It seems more likely to be a move added with the focus mode. The SOS Flare makes its return, bringing with it three other hunters to join the quest, and each of them are wearing a new armor set. Firstly, the Yellow Hammer user. I originally thought it was great Jagras armor, but then I realized Jagras armor could never be this good looking. The closest monster to this armor, I feel, is the Doshiguma. The Stinger also changes, no longer boasting the fancy new design, but instead opting to have the more bulky design that we see previously in World. To the right of him appears to be a longsword user, wearing armor with a cat motif. 
It features built-in goggles, the new slinger, and large knobbly shin pads. I don't think that this armor correlates to any monster that we've been shown yet. For these two hunters, however, I'm not sure what secondary weapon they're carrying. I'm guessing it's a gun, so any gun users will have to tell me. Lastly, the final armor set features knobby pauldrons made of large scales. This could be two possible monsters. The new smaller raptors come to mind, but it's more likely our mysterious sand trap monster. The large patterns of scales it has makes it a way more suitable fit. We get to see the hunter with his greatsword at the ready in focus mode. And as the Doshigama attacks, quickly guards, which results in a parry. The sequence then leads into a counterattack from the monster. But how does this work? Will it be like a QTE or a button mash to overpower the monster? Because God, if so. Ah! So that was our first look at the gameplay and story trailer for Wilds. And God damn, was it good. Tons of new information to go off of. So let me know if I missed anything, or if you have any other theories as to how scenes could play out differently. Until June 7th, Hunters.